morning, good morning, good morning. Nice to be here again. Excuse my voice, I have, I have the creepy crud or something, I don't know what it is. Excuse me. Our 20mm Airfix with British Hussars are starting to look like Hussars. I've put a lot of effort in. Put a lot of time in on these. I mean, they're still not finished, but <sighs> starting to get there. So I'm very pleased with the way these are going. They're starting to look like hazards. As much as they can look like hussars. Because the reason I say that is I went on the Plastic Soldier Review website. I thought I. <coughs> Excuse me. I thought I would check these figures out, which I did, and Plastic Soldier Review website wasn't very complimentary towards them. And they were much more inaccurate than I realized. Um, I knew there were some inaccuracies with these figures, but I didn't realize how many. I mean, I knew there should have been a belt going from top left to bottom right, across the chest. There should be a white belt, which there isn't on these figures. So that's point number one, but I wasn't just going to paint in a diagonal white stripe. It's, that's not the way to do it. That would look pretty rubbish, I think. So I, I sort of left it. But there's, there's quite a number of other things wrong with these figures. The red bag on the Shaco or Busby Bearskin, whatever you want to call it, is too big. It's too big. And it's on the wrong side. It's on the left hand side and it should be on the right hand side. So that's another two problems, wrong side and too big. So that's that. Um, these you can clearly see are wearing breeches and high boots. And they should be wearing leggings. Because by 1811, leggings had been introduced as standard. To cover the breeches and boots, so they'd be wearing these. These are on the box. I haven't got a box to hand to show you, but on the box, they're they're. It says Waterloo British Hussars, and if they were at Waterloo, they would be wearing leggings as standard, either grey or brown leggings. So that's sort of wrong. Um, what else did they complain about? Um, shark's teeth. There's no shark's teeth on the saddle blanket, which the, doubtedly there isn't. Which is one problem we had. Um, we ended up um, drawing the shark's teeth in with a very fine pencil to get some accuracy in painting them. So that they're, they're, 
they were complaining there's no sharks cheap on the saddle blanket, which there isn't. But then they was also saying that on campaign they wouldn't have used that type of saddle blanket anyway, it would have been something different. I'm not sure what, but it would have been something different. Which actually is, um, if you think about it, quite nice, using something different, because it makes my life a lot easier. I won't have to paint shark's teeth. If I do another batch of these, I won't have to paint shark's teeth. I just amend the saddle blanket. So that was another thing they complained about. <coughs> um, you know, the usual thing they complained about, the horse and the stand being separate, and when you put the two together, they do all that business, the horses tend to lean over, which I've told you about. Yeah, so more inaccurate than I realise. But a lot of this, I only sort of realize when we're two thirds of the way through painting them. So I'm going to have to just put up with it this time round and finish the job. I will see the job through. Um, don't don't get me wrong. When these are painted and mounted up and all, they're going to look really nice. They are going to look really nice. And at the end of the day, our primary reason for doing these is gaming pieces for the gaming table. All right, it's nice, we want them as accurate as possible. You want to get them as accurate as you can, and as good as you can. I like these things as accurate as I can get them. And next time round, if we paint more of these, as I'm sure at some stage I probably will, because I have boxes and boxes of Airfix British Hazars. I mean, I must have a, in the spare room now, I must have a couple of hundred of these British Hazars. So next time round, all the inaccuracies with these figures, we'll put them to rights. We'll cut off the original bag on the shaker and we'll put it the other side and smaller, make it smaller. And you can add a cross belt, that's no problem with some um, modeling putty or something, that's no problem. We can, we can do all those things, but this time round, anyway, this time round we're just going to finish the job, mount them up and base them and That'll be two dozen British Hazards. We're, we're well on the way to finishing these now. And despite all the inaccuracies, they're going to look nice. They are going to look nice. And they'll look nice on the gaming table and it's gaming pieces. Fine. It just, it's too late in the day for me to forget about with these things now. It's, it's just... Yeah, I mean, even this... The Napoleonic Wars Part 1 by Ellen F. Funken, which most of you have, I'm sure. <coughs> Even this shows the saddle blanket with the shark's teeth. It does show you the cross belt there also, which is missing. But it shows you the... Um, Shark's teeth on the saddle blanket, yeah. Apparently, oh, sugar. That blanket wasn't used <coughs> on campaign. Excuse me a moment. Ah. They would use something else. I'm not sure what. I'd have to look into that and find out. But that's, that's, yeah. And as you could see by that illustration, the bag on the... It goes on the right hand side, which you should have been. So, things to remember for next time. They're still going to look nice, they're still going to look good. We're well on the way to finishing these figures. I'm going to give them a good, 
um, good crack today. I'm going to get a cup of tea. Thanks as always for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for blah, 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 blah. Um, grateful as always. Um, see you on the next one.